Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. If you're new to my channel, thanks for checking it out. I hope you're all doing very well. In my last how-to tutorial, I put together a simple to follow, step-by-step -step guide on how to tie the hair rig. This next how-to follows on from the basis of the hair rig, but with a number of slight yet simple changes that advance the hair rig into a blowback rig. It's one of my most favored rigs for many months of the year, and same goes for many other anglers all over the world. As we know, carp feed by way of sucking in and blowing out. As the fish suck the rig in, its natural motion is to then eject the rig by blowing it back out. As it does this, the hook remains in place, taking hold, while the ring on the shank of the hook is forced up to the eye and the bait is then ejected out. This making it very difficult for the carp to fully eject the whole rig. The blowback rig offers many options for presenting a number of different baits such as particles, critically balanced baits and more. Be it for the spring months or for the duration of the year, this rig can cover you for many, many options. So let's take a look at the components you will need and how to tie the blowback rig. The components you will need are your choice of the following. Hooks, hook link material, rig rings, shrink tube, anti-tangle sleeves, braid scissors or snips, a baiting needle, a puller tool, bait stops, and lastly, a bait of your choice. For demonstration purposes, I'm using one of my more favorite combinations for the spring months, which is basically just a single tiger nut and a 12 millimeter pop-up pineapple and banana flavor from DNA Baits. To start, remove eight to 10 inches of the hook link material. Next, strip off five to six inches of coating. Once the coating is removed, make a small overhand loop in the hook link material. Sometimes using a baiting needle can help with this, just as we did in the previous hair rig tutorial. For those of you that have not yet seen the how-to tutorial on how to tie a hair rig and you would like to get up to speed on exactly how to tie it, you can click this link and that will take you over to that video now. Now take a single rig ring and slide over the loop you have just tied. Place the rig ring about one inch up from the overhand knot and make a single overhand knot to secure the rig ring in place. Next, take your hook of choice, passing the end of the hook link material through the back of the eye of the hook, pulling the hook link through until the bottom of the hook meets the rig ring, like so. At this stage, we'll take the rig ring and pass it over the point of the hook. It's ideal to leave enough length for the position of the rig ring on the shank of the hook. My personal preference is to align the rig ring with the barb of the hook. This helps the mechanics of the rig work effectively. Next, grip the hook and the rig ring in place between your thumb and finger. Now, tie the knotless knot by making a number of turns going down and around the shank of the hook. Between six to 10 wraps is more than enough. Finishing off the knotless knot by passing the end of the hook link material back through the back of the eye of the hook. Please note that it is normal for the uncoated braid to come through the eye of the hook, as seen here. This will actually offer more movement and flex in the rig mechanics not only helping the bait be presented in a more natural way on the bottom of the lake or river, but also aid more in the hooking of the fish. Next, we're going to add a small section of shrink tubing as a small kicker on the eye of the hook. Trim off a small section of shrink tubing. I personally use about six millimeters in length and slide this onto the hook link and down onto the hook, sliding it over the eye. I like to cover up at least a couple of wraps of the knotless knot, the eye of the hook, and at least three millimeters past the eye of the hook. Once shrunk and set in place, this small amount of tubing will actually help the hook turn and take hold as the fish sucks it in and blows the rig out. The next step is to steam the shrink tubing. To do this, hold the hook in one hand like so and the hook link in the other, while quickly passing the shrink tube over the steam from the kettle. A few quick passes should do the trick. Remember, as you make the passes over the steam to slightly offset the hook link from the hook, this will help create a bend in the shrink tube and will stay set in place as the tubing shrinks around the eye of the hook. As a side note, a lighter can be used in place of steam, but please be mindful not to hold the rig or shrink tube in the flame for too long. This will result in damage to the rig and could possibly do harm to yourself. Also, if you are a minor, it's great to have you here watching and following along, but please have a parent or guardian help you with this section. Steam from a boiling kettle can be very dangerous. Moving on, next slide your anti-tangle sleeve on. Be sure to check it's going on with the tapered end going towards the hook. Now, taking the end of the hook link material, form a loop and tie an overhand knot. Now placing the loop end of the rig onto a puller tool and the hook end onto another, 
pull both ends of the rig away from one another. This will help to seat the nuts. Finally, mount your bait of choice to the hair, followed up with a bait stop, and you're ready to fish. So there you have it, a very simple rig to tie and use in your own angling that will offer year-round effective presentations for many different baits that will help you catch more carp. As always, if you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments below. For those of you interested in following along with more of this type of content, be sure to hit that subscribe button along with the notification bell, so that way I can keep you up to date on all my carpy goings on. I hope this tutorial helps you in your angling, I'd love to hear about it if it has. And as always, thanks for watching.